Greetings and welcome back to the workshop. We are back on the Harrison. Since the last episode, uh, as you can see, it's a little bit messy. I've been diagnosing a few little bits and pieces and finding out what I need to buy for the machine. I think the most noticeable thing is that I've managed to get the four jaw chuck off. Unfortunately, I didn't get the C-spanner to take the chuck off. So I had to resort to uh, a bit of big metal and a bit of brute force. But a couple of taps and it started to come loose and it came off really well. So we can now put the three jaw chuck back on once I've given that a clean. Now, going to the saddle, I diagnosed what that movement was. If you saw it in the last video, we had a bit of play. It was the Y axis lead screw nut. There was no adjustment screws on it, so you couldn't tighten it up or give it any adjustment. It was just literally just free. So I sorted that. But I will cover that in another video because we do have to do some more work here because I stripped this down. I've given this a good clean. If you are on my Instagram or Facebook, you'll have seen I post some pictures up of before and after of what this bit looked like before I cleaned it and after I cleaned it. But really the whole thing was to take it apart so I could see what was going on with this juddering or this notching that I can feel here. Uh, and my discovery is the thrust bearings have definitely uh, seen better days. So, we've ordered some new ones. So we've got those, they're here, we just need to fit them. That is going to be another episode, because I just don't have time today. We'll strip this completely down again, because we need to clean all this top saddle. It all needs cleaning, taking apart cleaning, so we'll do all that all in one, one hit. We've also fixed the handle. In my efforts to try and straighten it, I did break it a little bit more than it was before. It was just a simple case of a bit of alley welding and it's back perfect in one shape and I'm really pleased with it. We have got an inverter. I didn't buy an expensive one, I didn't see the point. Because the Hunyang one is done really well. So this one, I am going to put this one on. Uh, just a cheap one off eBay, not very dear. This is a three horsepower, so the machine is only two horsepower, but this is a three horsepower, uh, 240 volt to three phase. So first things first, we need to uh, put this somewhere and uh, Put some wires to it and put some wires to the motor and see if we can get it rolling. Right, so temporarily I'm going to put it here. It's accessible from the lathe and it's out of the way enough so it's not going to get knocked. So we'll just mark into this into there. Right, so we need to get the power in here and we also need to get the motor wired up into here. So we shall open it up and... Uh, that is a long screw for what that is. Right, there we go. Put that down there out of the way. Right, so what have we got? So the right back here, where, on, where these holes are here, is where the wires, the input and the output go. Uh, you can see there, earth, live, neutral, and then the three phase motor goes here. So that's where we're gonna be wiring up to today. Right, so I'll put some power in. I've got that connected up. Obviously it's not connected at the, uh, the actual power end, but that's the power in, and this is the power out to the motor. So we'll go look at the motor end and uh, get that sorted. Right, so here's the motor which is very going to be very difficult for you to see but it does show here where we need to reconnect in this box so we'll get this box off and it's not what I was expecting to see not what I was expecting at all so obviously that's the input there uh, the earth is, we have got an earth attached there uh, right, bear with me because these are all numbered
Right, that's a bit better, isn't it? We've gone through all the wires. We've, uh, as, you can, as you saw, hopefully on the time lapse, we've put all the right wires following this little diagram here because this says connection low voltage. So it's a bit neater, so we can get that back together and then we can uh, see if it runs, eh? See if we can get the motor to turn. Right, let's see if it runs. So I'm happy that that is running the motor. So now I will reassemble the motor housing, put the belts back on, and then we'll see which way it's running and make sure that forwards is actually the correct way on the lathe. So that's the next job, after a cup of tea. Right, let's see here. Uh, we'll do it in slow first. Strange sounding rattle. Let's try it in high. Okay. We've got to run it in the right direction. Yes, I still have to go through some of the settings on the VFD. I don't think I'll be changing very much. So my job now is I'm going to get this clean, or as clean as I can, get the back of this clean so we can get the three jaw chuck back on there so we're ready to do uh, do some turning. That rattle that I could hear is uh, the clutch plate rattling. So when I get a chance to take all this apart, we shall investigate that and see what's going on there. So there we are, literally straight out the box, onto the wall, power in, power to the motor, switched on and away she went. It's that simple. I have done no settings whatsoever on that VFD. I did on the Hunyang on the bridge port, but this one, nothing, not done a thing. So we are up and running. I'm able to start machining. Yeah, I could crack on and I could get all these bits and pieces repaired now, but I really need the machine running. I need to be able to uh, turn parts. I'm not going to be turning thousands of parts. I'm literally just going to be doing bits and pieces for the steam engine build. So the ability to have a machine that is up and running, it's quite vital. The MyFed that I had before that was up and running. So if I did need a little piece doing, I could jump on and use it. That's what I need with this. I need the ability to jump on and crack on with something. The bits and pieces that I feel that need looking at, they can be like in between jobs. Uh, next is going to be this handle. We're going to get this sorted. So if you like what you see in the video, please do click the like button and that will help it share further in YouTube. And don't forget, you can always hit that subscribe button and the notification bell and you'll be notified when we next release a video. 
Join me next time for more trials and tribulations in the Matchover's Workshop. Stay safe. Laters.